Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We have n independent and identically distributed random variables from x1 to xn. The random variables are jointly absolutely continuous. They have a BDF denoted by small f and a CDF denoted by capital F. X with a subscript k written between brackets is the kth largest random variable. So x between brackets 1, this is the maximum of the random variables. x sub n is the minimum. The goal is the joint distribution between xk and xk plus 1. The starting point is the conditional probability density function of xk plus 1 given xk. Specifically, the kth largest random variable is alpha. What is the conditional PDF of xk plus 1 as a function of beta? Note that by definition, x of k is greater than x of k plus 1. Our interest is the case in which beta is less than alpha. We start with the conditional complementary CDF of xk plus 1. The probability that xk plus 1 is greater than beta given that xk is equal to alpha. To get the conditional BDF, we take the conditional complementary CDF and differentiate it with respect to beta, then multiply by minus 1. If this is the number line, this is alpha and this is beta. What does it mean that xk plus 1 is greater than beta? xk is alpha and is here. The maximum random variable x1 and the random variables x2 all the way to xk minus 1, they all have values greater than alpha. For xk plus 1 to be greater than beta, from among the remaining n minus k random variables, so we exclude from x1 to xk, from among the remaining n minus k random variables, at least one of them must be in this interval between beta and alpha. If no one among those n minus k random variables is in this interval, then xk plus 1 is less than beta. To be greater than beta, at least one of the n minus k random variables, those are the n random variables, excluding the k largest random variables, at least one is between beta and alpha. This probability is a sum. We take small m from 1 to n minus k. From the n minus k random variables, we choose m and note that m is at least 1. We have this binomial coefficient, n minus k, choose m. Then the m random variables that are chosen take values between beta and alpha. We have the k largest random variables. The remaining ones are n minus k. We split the n minus k random variables into two groups. A group of m random variables, and m must be strictly positive. It's one or more. And those m random variables are between beta and alpha. The remaining ones, n minus k minus m random variables, those are less than beta. Of course, when we compute this probability, it is a conditional probability, given that the kth largest random variable is equal to alpha. So what is this probability? What is the probability that one of those random variables is between beta and alpha, given that it is less than alpha? To be between beta and alpha, the probability is f of alpha minus f of beta. This is the probability that the random variable is less than alpha, but greater than beta. In the denominator, we have the probability of the event we condition on, which is that the random variable is less than alpha. This is the CDF evaluated at alpha. If we write the conditional probability explicitly, in the numerator, we have the joint probability that x is less than or equal to alpha, x is less than or equal to alpha, and is greater than beta. In the denominator, we have the probability that x is less than or equal to alpha. This probability is big F evaluated at alpha. Big F is the CDF. In the numerator, we can write this joint probability as the probability of x greater than beta less than or equal to alpha times the probability that x is less than or equal to alpha given x greater than beta less than or equal to alpha. If x is in this range, then it is less than or equal to alpha with probability 1. Thus, in the numerator, we have this probability here, which is the CDF evaluated at alpha minus the CDF evaluated at beta. This is the conditional probability that one of the IID random variables we have started with is in the interval between beta and alpha, given that it is less than or equal to alpha. We want m of those random variables to be between beta and alpha. So we raise this probability to the power m. The remaining random variables, we have n minus k minus m of them. They must be less than beta. So the conditional probability is the probability that x is less than or equal to beta and x is less than or equal to alpha. Downstairs, we have probability that x is less than or equal to alpha. That's the event we are conditioning on. We still have capital F of alpha in the denominator. In the numerator, this joint probability is the probability that x less than or equal to beta times the probability of the event that x is less than or equal to alpha, given that x is less than or equal to beta. This conditional probability is equal to 1. 
what we have in the numerator is big F evaluated at beta from our original set of n iid random variables m of them are between alpha and beta n minus k minus m of them are less than beta the kth largest is alpha and the other ones are greater than alpha from this bracket we have f of alpha raised to the power m from that one we have f of alpha raised to the power n minus k minus m we have one over big f of alpha raised to the power n minus k and we can take this outside the sum Inside the sum, we have n minus k, choose m, f of alpha minus f of beta to the power m, f of beta to the power n minus k minus m. From this summation, isolate the term with a small m equal to n minus k. Note that if a small m is equal to n minus k, this f of beta is raised to the power zero. That is to say, this term is one. We isolate this term, here it is, and we write down the sum small m from one to n minus k minus one. What we have obtained here is the conditional probability that x k plus one is greater than beta, given that x k is equal to alpha. We are interested in the conditional PDF. We differentiate the conditional complementary CDF and multiply by minus one. We differentiate this term. Note that inside the sum, this is a function of beta, and that is another function of beta. So we apply the product rule for differentiation. We get two parts. Here, we find the derivative of this part. This is m, the bracket, to the power m minus 1. We differentiate whatever is inside the bracket with respect to beta. We get minus the PDF of the observations, and then there is a minus sign, so we get small f of beta. In this part, we have the derivative of this function of beta. We get n minus k minus m, big f of beta, raised to the power n minus k minus m minus 1, and then by the chain rule, we get small f of beta. Here is the minus sign. Let's combine these two parts small f of beta can be taken as a common factor. We take these terms as a common factor. Inside the bracket, we have m f of beta minus n minus k minus m f of alpha minus f of beta. This part is minus n minus k f of alpha minus f of beta. We also have plus m f of alpha minus m f of beta. This term and that one go away. Inside the bracket, we have m f of alpha minus n minus k times f of alpha minus f of beta. Take the binomial coefficient inside the bracket. Here, the binomial coefficient is multiplied by m. There, the binomial coefficient is multiplied by n minus k. In this part, we write the binomial coefficient n minus k choose m as n minus k minus 1 choose m plus n minus k minus 1 choose m minus 1. That's the fundamental recurrence relation of the binomial coefficients. A choose B is equal to A minus 1 choose B minus 1 plus A minus 1 choose B. Here we rewrite M times N minus K choose M as N minus K, N minus K minus 1 choose M minus 1. Know that if we have N minus K divided by M and we multiply by this binomial coefficient, which is N minus K minus 1 factorial divided by N minus 1 factorial, N minus K minus 1 minus between brackets N minus 1 factorial, that's N minus K minus M factorial. If we multiply this by that, we get n minus k factorial. From here, we get m factorial. We have n minus k choose m. When we do these two changes, we can take n minus k as a common factor. Here it is outside the sum. This part is n minus k minus 1 choose m minus 1 times f of beta. Multiply by these two factors outside the bracket. We get n minus k minus 1 choose m minus 1 f of alpha minus f of beta to the power m minus 1. Then we have f of beta to the power n minus k minus m. I write it as n minus k minus 1 minus between brackets m minus 1. The other term will exactly be equal to this one with every m minus 1 replaced by m. This means that we have a telescopic sum. When we carry out this summation, there are two surviving terms. This part evaluated at m equal to 1, that part evaluated at m equal to n minus k minus 1. When m is equal to 1, the binomial coefficient is 1, this part is 1, we have f of beta raised to the power n minus k minus 1. When m is n minus k minus 1, the binomial coefficient is 1, f of beta is raised to the power 0, so this is 1. We are left with f of alpha minus f of beta 
to the power n minus k minus 1. This part with the minus sign and the outside factor is exactly this term here. Those go away, and we are left with the conditional PDF equal to n minus k, small f of beta, big F of beta to the power n minus k minus 1. We divide by big F of alpha raised to the power n minus k. In a previous video, we obtained the PDF of the kth largest random variable. The PDF is n, small f of alpha, n minus 1, choose k minus 1, 1 minus big F of alpha raised to the power k minus 1. Finally, we have f of alpha raised to the power n minus k. If we multiply the old result by what we have here, we get the joint distribution of x of k and x of k plus 1. When we do the multiplication, this goes away with that. We have n, we have the PDF of the observations evaluated at alpha multiplied by the PDF of the observations evaluated at beta. We have this part and that one. Beta should be less than alpha. So we have this indicator function here. One, if beta is less than alpha, zero otherwise. We also have the terms n minus k from here. From the PDF of x of k, we have n and the binomial coefficient n minus 1 choose k minus 1. This n is here. The binomial coefficient is n minus 1 factorial over k minus 1 factorial n minus k factorial. n minus k factorial is n minus k times n minus k minus 1 factorial. n minus k over n minus k, that's 1. n minus 1 factorial is n minus 1. Then we have n minus 2 factorial. Let's not forget this k minus 1 factorial. This bracket here can be written as n minus 2 minus between brackets k minus 1. These three factorials are n minus 2 choose k minus 1. This is the joint PDF. One of the n random variables is the kth largest. One of the remaining n minus 1 random variables is xk plus 1. We have the PDF evaluated at alpha and at beta. From the n random variables, if we exclude x of k and x of k plus 1, we should choose k minus 1 random variables. Those must exceed alpha. So we have here 1 minus big F of alpha. That's the probability that one of the random variables is greater than alpha, and this is raised to the power k minus 1. We have k plus 1 random variables, k minus 1 greater than alpha, then we have x of k and x of k plus 1. The remaining random variables, we have n minus between brackets k plus 1 of them, must be less than beta.